woke you up this morning, started you on your way. He's worthy of the praise. Yes, sir. Will you repeat after me? I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come magnify. leadership retreat and some of the senior women spoke a word and said that the lesson that we are studying now and what we're working on and the agenda that we're on now it's winning souls and reaching out to the lost they said the text that we're using this morning is a turning point text for our church and the Holy Spirit has already confirmed it God is in this place. I can feel his presence. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Let me tell you something. This morning, you ought to just get it. Whatever it is you need, you ought to, whatever it is that you need, you ought to get it this morning. Don't wait for next week. Don't wait for Wednesday. Get it. Tell somebody, tell them, get it now, get it now. When you leave this place, you ought to feel better than when you came in. You ought to feel his joy, feel his peace, feel his power. You ought to be able to lay hands on somebody and make them know that you know God. When you touch somebody, they ought to know that you know God. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord.
John for his dog. <laughs> if you have your Bibles. Bless his name. Bless his name. I mean, if you got anything to be grateful for, wait, wait. If you know you already got the victory, hold it, hold the word up and wave it. Victory wave. I already have the victory. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is the Word of God. This is the truth of God. I can have everything that's in this book. I believe everything that's in this book. I can do everything that's in this book. This is the Word of God. There's power in the Word. In Jesus' name. If you'll turn with me to the 8th chapter of the book of Acts, we will try to get a word out. But any way the Holy Ghost wants to lead, I feel him. Somebody wants to praise him. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to lay your burden down, tell the person next to you, excuse me, but I think I got something going on here that I can't control. It's like a fire. Shut up in my bones. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Let me tell you something. I love to praise it. And I love to have church, just like we're having church. And I love to see the house full. We already had one service, but we're almost full this service. And when we start obeying this word, every seat will be taken. The walls will be lined up. They'll be all out in the hall. with the musicians and you're in the battle God sends the musicians before the army and they set the atmosphere and the devil has to back up God getting ready to get somebody to run in here. 
I know you all blocked up, but I feel like somebody, somebody God's going to get running in here. Sixth verse of the eighth chapter reads like this the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem to Gaza which is desert somebody say desert somebody say arise and go And he arose and went and guide me some man should come and guide me some 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 Christian some believer somebody somebody who belongs to the church some somebody who says they're a worshiper somebody who says they know the Lord and Philip ran thither somebody say ran somebody say it's time to run run thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest and they said how shall I show this except a man should guide me goes on to say and he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him say sit with him and the place of the scripture which he read was this it was he was like a sheep led to slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearers and so he opened not his mouth and in his humiliation and his judgment was taken away who who shall declare praise God his generation who is it that should declare his generation for his life has been taken from the earth and the eunuch answered Philip and said I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this is he talking of himself or some other man then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Somebody say, we ought to preach Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is the water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest in your heart, in your heart, in thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded that the chariot to stand still. Some of how many know in here that you can command your car to do what you want it to do? If, if you if you if you want to if, if you want to have your car pick somebody up on Sunday morning, your car doesn't rule you. You rule your car. Wish I had somebody. Ah, uh, praise God. Amen. Uh, and the Bible says, and he commanded his chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. The spirit of the Lord. Somebody say the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing and Philip was found in Azotus passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea God's word for God's people want to talk to you for a few minutes have to put this in your spirit God told me that this is your turnaround scripture this is going to take you from membership to relationship this is going to take you from having a seat to making a difference this is going to be the scripture that's going to blow up explode implode cause you to be a new person in Christ and so we are challenged by this scripture to go get the Ethiopian. Look at somebody next to you and say, it is time to go get the Ethiopian. You may be seated in his presence. Go get the Ethiopian. Go get the Ethiopian. Oh, what a particular and peculiar word that is call us praise God first of all to go and then understand that this particular scripture is calling us to be specific 
The Ethiopian is outside our gate. The Ethiopian is the person that we pass by. Is the little black boy we have nothing to say to because we're afraid of him. The Ethiopian is the alcoholic that we've given up on and God has not. The Ethiopian is the person who's hooked on drugs and we say, well, it's just too bad because there's nothing we can do about it. The Ethiopian is the AIDS victim who we won't even look at because we're embarrassed about our own uh, sexuality and our own uh, uh, promiscuity and we're just thanking God that it's not us. The AIDS victim is the Ethiopian. The alcoholic is the Ethiopian. How the little black boy is the Ethiopian. The little black girl who does not know how to control her body is the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian is in your family. The Ethiopian is your cousin. The Ethiopian is your brother. The Ethiopian is somebody who is what we, look, we have got to get to the Ethiopian. Go get the Ethiopian. My brothers and my sisters, I don't know if you really feel what I feel, but listen. Um, we have a problem both in the church and in the world. In the world, we are, we're putting on like everything's all right. The fact of the matter is that we are on the abyss of Armageddon. We got in here today, but I'm telling you it's so serious we not, might not get home tonight. You have to be asleep to not see the signs. The world is coming as we know it to an end unless we repent. Oh, you don't. Mr. Bush, it will not be an attack on Iraq that's going to solve our problem. Our problem is still caught up in the Word of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, my brothers and sisters, we're huddled whether we know it or not. We praise in God because that's all, that's what we do is praise God. And that's what we should do. And that's what we're going to have to do. And we're going to have to praise Him with more vigor and more vitality. But worship is not the mission of the church. What you are doing here this morning and what we just went through, praise God, is one of the most important things. But it's like putting fuel in your gas tank. It, it is not designed, praise God, for to be your mission. It's designed to be your fuel. It's not designed, praise God. The, the worship and praise is designed to be your fuel to make a difference out there and be able to go get the Ethiopian. If you don't have any fuel in your tank and you're simply living off of fumes, some of us have gotten all the way down. We ain't got nothing in our tank. And we're living off the fumes. But I'm telling you that this is what praise will do. It ought to send you from this place. And get you in the mindset of getting the Ethiopian. Look at this story. Philip. On his way from a revival meeting. If you read the chapter before, he was in a revival. Preaching all over uh, that region. And people were being revived. But as he was coming down this way, he ran into a stranger, a black man, a black man of means, a black man uh, of import, a, a, a treasurer for the whole empire of Ethiopia. But a black man. Thank God, because you can't miss this. Go get the black man. Go get the black boy. Go get the black girl. How many visitors, first time visitors do we have in here today? Raise your hand. First time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the problem. You're trying to figure out why we don't seem to have the people should, this place should be full and that, that's not going to happen until you take on the mantle of the apostle. 
and get off of your lazy mess and begin to touch people and tell them where you go and because they don't have transportation you've got to inconvenience yourself self our preoccupation with self has subverted our occupation to win the lost and restore the fallen God has given me this to give to you in these last days that you may have a mission and make a difference in your lifetime someone said it said that what how much time do I have before I die they asked God how much time do I have before I die and God said you have enough time to make a difference we can no longer my friends sit and worship without the worship sending us to get the Ethiopian to get the little brother or the little sister or the cousin you know Willie cousin Willie who's a drunk who you have discarded and rejected because you don't think he can be redeemed but he's valuable to God Jesus died for his soul and so there's several little steps here and we'll just go through them quickly the first step is we need to get the revelation you say what are you so excited about I got the revelation when you get the revelation you get excited too you'll be more excited than I am if you get the revelation if you ever move from membership to relationship you will get excited too you got to get the revelation you got to do something besides singing in the choir you got to do something besides play an instrument you got to do something besides usher you got to get outside these gates and get the Ethiopia with a crowd like this there should be 300 people in this church has never been in here before you're not listening to me well where are they gonna sit with you well can they sit on the front row they can sit on the stage there are no reserved seats in here there are no reserved seats in the kingdom of God well suppose they're dirty well you were once dirty but you had to meet him on the road so you got to get the revelation somebody say get the revelation the Bible says we got to rise and go get the revelation verse 26 says he he arose and he went praise God said the angel of the Lord spoke to him who's gonna tell you this God where do you get a revelation from God how do you get a revelation you get a re revelation from the angel of the Lord the angel of this house is your pastor is the preacher prophet set man in this house he's the angel is speaking to you right now uh, and you but you got to get the revelation are you listening to me for Philip he heard the angel of the Lord you got to get the revelation so verse 26 is very important to understand that you've got to have the revelation that's why I'm so excited where does my passion come from you can't fake passion my passion come from inside I'm concerned that we should not live and die and miss our mission to have a vision without mission is like having a dead marriage if you got no passion in your marriage you're just in an arrangement you're just keeping up a good face you're just looking good to the world but you're not on your mission you got to remind one another that passion is always important how many people in here know that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care the word is compassion what has happened to our compassion it has been subverted by a preoccupation with self about me my three us four and no more you couple that with a media blitz that's destroying the minds of our children and you got a real problem we got to go and get the Ethiopian I was reading Jet magazine this week 
this week's issue. I get Jet Magazine because the only magazine that I can, I don't think, I'm not really crazy about it because it's, it's nothing in it but about entertainers and athletes and that's part of our problem. We think that the only people that are worth dealing with are entertainers and athletes and our children get that as a role model and then they find out that there's more to life than being an entertainer or an athlete and they get confused from the very beginning and Jet Magazine puts on the cover of their magazine to show you who, where they are. Where, the question is, where are you? Where they are, they have on the cover Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur. These are the, these are the legends. This, that's what they call them, legends. And your children and you and your children's children are being poisoned and you don't even know it. Thugs. Now the thugs are the role models. We who used to rule, rule this world, the black man, now is royalty without a future. We who used to rule the kingdoms of Africa, the Mideast, we who used to be in charge. And now the lowest man on the totem pole. We're the new slaves. Still dealing with chains. Used to be iron. Now gold. But we have a fascination with chains. And we will never come out of it until the people of God, inspired by the Word of God, take this message and fight against the overwhelming presence of evil. As we move on, we'll see that it requires that we have to hear from God. Romans 10, 17 says, faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know why I know that a lot of church people don't, they don't have the revelation? Because they think that hearing from God is simply to hear my message. They don't crack the Bible during the week. They don't go to Sunday school. They don't show up for leadership retreats. They don't, they don't go to midweek service. The devil has convinced them that they don't need that. And yet faith comes by and hearing by the word of God and hearing has to do with teaching, studying and praying. And every time you get a chance in your church to teach, to be taught, to study or to pray, you ought to show up. Are you listening to me? Every time you get a chance, you ought to show up. Are you following me? And it's important to understand that you need to be in Sunday school. You know, when leaders don't go to Sunday school, why should the followers go? Huh? Man, our Sunday school should be should be uh, should be boiling over. But that's because you don't have you don't have value in education, and you don't understand that faith, which it takes to get the Ethiopian, has to come through your knowledge of the Word. And there's nobody in here that knows the Word completely, because God is the kind of God that you once you think you got Him, you ain't. Because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And the Bible says it's not about circumcision or uncircumcision. It's about faith in love. The next thing we need to get to is, is, is an issue. When we start dealing with hearing, we've got to move beyond the hearing. Y'all are real slow with that. Come on here. Change the, the, the screen. I want the people to come on. Stay with me. Hallelujah. You've you, you got to understand that the price of success is... Is this whole business of meditating day and night and night and day and day and night and night and day and day and night and we need to we, we, we need to do this in order to build in order to bless in order to seek in order to save in order to get the Ethiopian that's what we got to have our mind change you, you know what I'm doing okay I'll tell you the truth I'll tell you the truth I said it up front somebody said to you you know what he's trying to do he's trying to change your mind I'm trying to get you to see a God who can change your mind and it is true make no secret about it. I would love to see your mind change toward what church is really all about. 
church is really not all about you're just showing up, giving God a tip of your hat and going home and wondering what time do we eat. It's about making a difference in the lives of people. And you should begin to get such a passion for people whose lives, how many in here can say Jesus Christ changed my life? I'm going to throw up both hands and my feet up in the air. Jesus Christ. How, how selfish it is of us to have made the change and don't value people who are lost. That man, that Ethiopian would have never gotten it straight if a member of the church called Philip one of light of the world's best stopped drew near took time put his car next to the man said step in my car and let me tell you what Jesus has done for me the goal is not to get people just to join our church. The goal is to get people saved under the knowledge and lordship of Jesus Christ and then to get them baptized and in church some is your 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 mother has a church. Go there then. But once you start doing this, you'll see your church fill up because people want to know what kind of faith that do you, do you have that will allow you to take time with me, a drunk, a whoremonger, a homosexual. The word for repentance is metanoia. You remember what it means? Change your so it's no secret. I'm trying to create an atmosphere for your mind to change. We are victims of tradition. Most churches have no evangelical mission at all. They operate simply off of worship and a study or a Sunday school. God has shown me that we can change this city if you get on your task. But guess what? You may have to change your course. Here was Philip on his way one place. I saw an Ethiopian. He changed his course. How many of you know that every day is not a sunshiny day. How many know that sometimes you have to go to the desert? Has anybody ever been in the desert? It's in the desert where God developed you. It's in the desert where God showed you he was God. It's in the desert where you, you were humble enough to say it's not me, but it's the Lord. It was in the desert that you really began to depend on the Lord. And it was to the desert that Philip went. That's D-E-S-E-R-T. That means desert, not dessert. Change your course. Amen. You, you don't understand why I'm doing this, do you? We all have to pass before Jesus. On judgment day, the fire in his eyes would strip us naked. And he will ask us, did the angel of your house ever teach you or tell you what you should have done? You're crying, Lord, Lord. But it's those who do the will of my father. We had a discussion, a, a bombshell discussion in our leadership retreat about how, wh what qualifies you for heaven. 
I'll, I'll tell you one thing. There are a lot of scriptures that'll help you to understand it, but I, I, I'll run you right down to Matthew 7 and 21. Is not those who cry, Lord, Lord, or, or hallelujah, hallelujah, or praise the Lord, praise the Lord, is the ones who do the will of my Father. And why am I pleading with you? Because as your teacher and your leader, if you would obey the will of God, you would get in the will of God. And if you get in the will of God, you please God. And to please God, you got to do something besides show up. You got to bring somebody with you by going out and touching the Ethiopian. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Is he okay? Not really. But I have a passion and it's burning on the inside of me and I will not rest until that passion is a glow in this church you are the light of the world a city set on a hill should not be hid let your light oh God so shine on Wednesday nights, I'm going to teach you how to make the contact and how to close the sale. But the first thing I want to do is get in your mind that our job is to get the Ethiopian. Surrendering, go back to where you were. Surrendering, surrendering to your will in obedience is the key. You remember that key scripture, 1 Samuel 15 and 22? It is better to obey obedience is better than sacrifice we need to stop trying to bring God a, a lamb the lamb has already been slain you cannot substitute your lamb for a surrendered will it's time for somebody in this church to say pastor I'm not even sure I understand everything but I know you're right and you're going to see a big difference in my life. I'm going to begin to do something I've never done before. I'm going to break out of the box and make a difference in somebody's life. The hardest challenge is my uncle. The hardest challenge is my son. But I'm not going to allow my son to go to hell. I'm going to fill up heaven and empty hell. I'm going to be about that business. Because I don't think you understand that God values these people that we have rejected. These Ethiopians are valuable the stranger is valuable to God and don't bring God a sacrificial lamb when only a surrendered will will do and the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world my brothers and my sisters as we close let me just say this to you that there is a whole world out there waiting right outside the gate Amen. to hear your testimony don't do like Samuel and just bring God what you want bring God what he asked for And it's time for us to stop being religious and start being holy. That brother standing up there has stood through the whole sermon. You know why? Because I can tell you why. Because he's got the revelation. You've never seen him stand before. He got the revelation. Do you have the revelation? Every person in this auditorium today who thinks they got at least a part of it and are willing to do something about it, I want you to put your Bibles down and present yourself to this altar because we can't do this by ourselves. We're going to have to pray that God will change our minds. I wish I had the power to just turn you toward the Ethiopian but I don't what I do have is his word